There's a scripture that says, lift up your everlasting gates. There's certain gates that wanted to determine your eternity. But G, so lift up, say, lift up your everlasting gates so that the king of glory might come in. In the heart of every human being, there's a gate that determines his future because all have been sinned. And all have been born under the, sin of law, under the law of sin and death. So that gate need to lift up for the king of glory to come in. Hallelujah. You understand? Every human being, there's a gate. His heart is a gate. And that gate need to lift up. Because it's an everlasting gate. We are all born under the law of sin and death because our great ancestor Adam, have missed the mark and sinned, and we've all born under that curse. So we all got that gate. But now the gate lift up so that the king of glory can come in. The gate the Bible speaks about is your heart. Lift up your everlasting gates. Your heart determine your future. And if it was not for Jesus and he did not come in, in through your gate, your eternity is not a good one. Your future eternity is not a good one. That's why we pray for your families. Pray, Lord Jesus, in my family's case, my family, my household members, my friends, lift up your everlasting gates so that the King of glory might come in. In the name of Jesus, lift up your everlasting gates so that the King of glory might come in. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. No one know your tomorrow. God know your tomorrow. No one know his tomorrow. No one know his next hour. That's why the Bible says, do not boast. Then say, tomorrow I'll go there, next week I'll go there. Rather say, if the Lord will. Amen. Because you do not know your tomorrow. I know of many healthy people. Good, strong people. Who have, who have thought tomorrow they will be around, then tomorrow never came. It's not only the old age and the sick will die, but healthy, healthy, strong people also die. No one know his tomorrow. No one know his tomorrow. Therefore, you need to pray for your family members and friends. Because if you close your eyes on this side of life, your eternity is fixed. You cannot change it after that. You determine, before you close your eyes on this side, you determine your eternity, your future. When you have closed your eyes, you cannot change nothing anymore. That is, that is set for eternity. You can never change that again. Except if God raised someone from the dead. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Say to God, is to, while, you got, while you still got breath, you must tell your friends. Pray for your family members. Make sure you are saved. Tell your family members about Jesus and the salvation that he offer. Because it's not only the old and the age and the sick who die, but young people who are strong and fit. And that is such an example. Sometimes I preach about it. I mean, this man, I, I, I suppose he was the strongest man in this province. And maybe one of the fittest as well. It was just one day that he was not anymore. He just died. He drowned. He just drowned in a river. Say to God, you do not know your tomorrow. You do not know your tomorrow. You don't even know your next hour. You don't know you're tonight. You don't know tomorrow morning. God knows. When you close your eyes on this side, you have fixed your eternity, your future, your eternity. If you've closed your eyes and your breath, you're lost. It is done. Say to God, you understand the seriousness of telling your friends Praying for your family members and pull your own life together. In Jesus' name. Give Jesus' hand. Amen. 
Sometimes we joke. We say, oh, Paul is going to teach this guy in heaven. He's going to sit there and there, and then Paul's going to fall. It's fixed on this side, friend. You determine even your position in heaven on this side, not the other side. It's, it, is, it is fixed on this side. You cannot go to heaven and learn now to be a better Christian in heaven. What you are here, you're going to be that side. The, the amount of Jesus that you allowed into your life, the same amount of Jesus will be forever in your life. If you took Jesus 20% into your life on this side, for eternity you will have only 20% of him. Hallelujah. Pray, Lord Jesus, grant me grace, for I do not know my tomorrow. I do not know my next hour. In Jesus' name. Amen. One thing about heaven, there will be no sin. Give God a hand for that. No sin. No temptation. No sin, no temptation. No devil to tempt you. Amen. That will be awesome. But the devil is there to test us and try us and even to purify us. That is his work. Not because God appointed him, he appointed himself. To test us and to try us. God did not appoint him. He appointed himself. And he many times go to heaven to ask to test us because he observed our lives. And he go and ask permission in the courts of heaven to test us. And when we mess up on earth, God's got no other choice but to allow him. Because God is just. Set your God next to There's no unjust in him. For he's holy and just by nature. Amen. So when the tempter comes to tempt you and to test you, he has asked permission and he has gained the right because he has observed your life. And he will not go to the courts of heaven wasting his time. When he goes to the courts of heaven to ask permission, he knows that he's got a legal right to ask. Set the guns to check your life. Amen. Sit quickly, please. I, I counseled some people in a week, and what came to my heart is, uh, the preaching here, sometimes you, might, you might, might maybe stumble because it's so straight and honest. Um, you know, sometimes, because I know the Lord in such a way, I also can think, oh God, the reason why God is saying to us what He's saying here, is not to judge you or to condemn you, but for you to be more careful about your life. Because you've got an enemy. Say to God, you've got an enemy. The enemy of your soul is looking for means and ways to make your life miserable. But as long as you stick to God's word, sticking, say to God, you sticking. Sticking to his word. His word is your salvation. His word is your safeguard. His word is your life. As long as you stick to his rules. I mean, if you drive on the road, let me give an example. Sorry, I'm going to compare a speed cop maybe to the tempter. Forgive me, please. Amen. <laughs> a speed cop is there out to find you if you break the rules. What can a speed cop do to you on the road if you stick to all the laws, regulations on the road? What can a speed cop do to you? Huh? If you drive exactly the speed limits, you drive exactly the way that the law commands you, the rules, what can a speed cop do to you, Henny? Huh? Zero. When can a speed cop give you trouble on the road? When does he become a very nasty person to you? Say to God, huh? when you are not sticking to the rules and the laws, that is when a speed cop can give you a troublesome time. The same in your life. When can the devil give you a troublesome time? When you don't stick to God's word. Why is God's word there? To make life miserable. To, is God a spiteful God? Oh, he's a spiteful God. He doesn't want me to enjoy life. That is what religious people think. No, his word. Safeguard me. 
from the tempter and the devil who's looking for opportunity to destroy me and give me a heart and a tough time. Demons and devils got one thing in mind, to make life miserable for you, to give you a tough time. They try their very level best to try to get you to give up, get tired of serving the Lord, get tired of life. That is their aim. In, 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 uh, th th that is their aim. To make us as Christians and every human being tired of living. Want to give up. Slow you down. Tempt you so that you might be frustrated, etc., etc., etc. But as long as you stick to God's word, God's word is your safeguard and protect you so that the evil one, although he desires to give you a tough time, he cannot harm you. Set your to God's word is my safeguard. So some people might think, oh, God is a spiteful God. He's a funny God. He doesn't want me to enjoy life. What, what is it that you want to enjoy in life? If you want to enjoy the, the, the sense of the flesh, your soul is sick. That's why some people will come to this church for a while and then they will start to stay away. Because they love this condition of their souls, but because the flesh, if you are used to the, to the, see, the sense of the flesh and you hear the sermons here, you're going to get uncomfortable. You know the picture about the ostrich that put his head in a hole so they don't want to see the trouble around him. He thinks he's safe, but he's not safe. How can he be safe? If he's in the bush and an ostrich put his head in a hole, do you think he's safe? But he doesn't see the trouble, so he feels better. There's still lions around. There's still leopards around. There's still cheetahs around. But he thinks he's safe. So some Christians, they say, no, I'm not going to go to church because he doesn't want to hear this. You think you're safe at home before the TV. The pastor is not nearby. <laughs> Satan going, so you cannot put your head in a hole and think you are safe. Have you seen that picture? The ostrich put his head in a hole so they don't see the trouble. You think now... Because he cannot see the trouble, he's saved from the trouble. Setter God, it will not safeguard you. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. That's why our people, they think they're going to live tomorrow. Tomorrow they're gone. <laughs> gone. Setter God, if you stick to God's word, Satan will not have a hold on you. Hallelujah. That is how you safeguard your life, is by sticking to God's word. Amen. And the greatest, great, the spirit of God's word in the New Testament is the spirit of grace. Give God a hand. God's word is not there to be tough on you, but God's grace enable you to live by his word. You understand? Satan God needs to to serve the Lord is not a tough thing. It's not. It's not easy. It's not comfortable, but it's not tough because God's grace is enabling us to live by His word. Pray, Lord Jesus, add more grace to my life in the name of Jesus. Anything that you cannot overcome, you ask for God's grace in that area, you soon find God's grace, when it floods that area of your life where you ask God's grace, you'll soon find, ah, this is not the trouble area anymore. Not the issue anymore. What was previously an issue for you is not an issue anymore because God's grace has filled that area in the name of Jesus. Say, thank you, Lord. Pray with me, Lord Jesus. Fill my weaknesses with your grace so that my weaknesses become my future strength. Today, people of God that you see are victorious in certain areas um, and, and, and certain 
you can find in my life and you can even find in your life and other preachers' lives, there's certain areas where I am strong in. The one I'm fearless. You must understand that at some point in my life, I was full of fear. And I invited the grace of God into this area, troublesome area. And when God's grace is entering this area of your life, your previous tormented area, which we will call a weakness, become a great strength. It become your, your future testimony. 